Hola, boys and girls. Welcome back to Letterman Row. I am Jeremy Birmingham. That is Spencer Holbrook. This is Talking Stuff, the Ohio State Recruiting Podcast, brought to you by Byers Automotive. Uh, Spencer's been on a mini vacay this week, so we hadn't caught up uh, on Talking Stuff throughout the week. But here we are on Sunday talking about Ohio State's 2022 recruiting efforts, which took a, I got a big shot in the arm this weekend as Gabe Powers, the country's top ranked outside linebacker prospect, according to 247 Sports, uh, and Ohio's top ranked player committed to the Buckeyes way earlier than he thought he was going to. And I think, Spencer, this is one of those moments where the, the pandemic, the nonstop shutdowns of recruiting, um, you know, there, there have been negatives in this for Ohio State, but when it comes to a guy like Gabe Powers, he just got to a point where he told me on, on Bermanology, why, why keep waiting? Um, if he knew that's where he was going to end up eventually, why wait? Why take the other visits? And uh, he decided against it. And I think one of the reasons why he did that, Spencer, is because there's so many other linebackers around the country. Jalen Walker in North Carolina, Desan McCullough, Sean Murphy, Justin Medlock, a handful of other guys coming up uh, that are getting some attention from Al Washington. Like, dude, like if you want in the class, you just better, you better get in. Even though you're Ohio's top ranked player, you think that spot is safe. But if they fill up, they fill up. Yeah, you can't wait. And Ohio State showed in the 2021 class, it fills up quickly. Once one domino falls, you know, nine could fall in the two weeks after it. And you need to, it's not that you need to have your mind made up, but I think it's you need to, you need to know where you stand with Ohio State, and where Ohio State stands with you. Because if you feel at all ready to commit to Ohio State, it might be time to do it just because yeah. you need to get in the class before it's too late. If he waits two months, you know, not that more of the booms are coming, but if he waits two months, there could be four linebackers committed in that 2022 class. And he, you know, well, that's saying, right. Hey. I mean, the thing is, with a guy like Powers, they wouldn't tell him no. They wouldn't say like, hey, exactly, we're full. But for a guy like Powers, you still don't want necessarily to be – lining up and saying, hey, there's already four guys. I'm the fifth. You want to be in there early and make sure your spot is, is reserved uh, and, and to make sure that other guys are making their decisions based on what you've done, not what you're – not you making your decision based on others. And I think it's interesting. Ohio State has – you know, there's been rumors for months now about Desan McCullough uh, from Kansas who um, a lot of scuttlebutt that he's been wanting to – and ready to commit to Ohio State, but they haven't been – comfortable saying, okay, yes, let's do it because nobody's met him in person. This is an, a situation where Gabe Powers has an advantage because he's from right down the road in Marysville and has been to Columbus and been on campus dozens of times. So they have a relationship with him that makes it easier to say yes. Um, even though you look at a guy like McCullough, six foot five, 225 pounds, 45 offers, NFL bloodlines, coach's son, all these great things about him. But you still haven't met him in person. And when you're a place like Ohio state, like 95% of the kids you offer are going to be interested in committing. So you have to be able to really rifle through uh, the minutia of who these kids are. And you can't say yes to everyone until you get a chance to meet them, which of course there's people out there who say, well, why offer a kid if you're not willing to say yes, but you know, these kids have two years left of high school and everyone's kind of freaking out. I, I'm not saying Gabe Powers shouldn't have committed. Obviously, again, he's from Ohio. He's right down the road. But why do you think that the 22 class is making these decisions earlier instead of waiting later? Like, I, If I was in their shoes, I probably would have waited longer because you couldn't go anywhere this summer. Like, Why, why feel compelled to, to hurry? Well, because I think it's because the 2021 class is so good at Ohio State, and they're going to carry that momentum into 2022. There are going to be some guys in this class that want to commit sight unseen because the 2021 class had a couple guys commit sight unseen. And so I think if you have that, that in the back of your head, you know, there are some guys that are national, national prospects that Ohio State's building relationships with them. I know that they're going to be in their top three, top four. I want to get my spot in this class early. That right. way, when these 2022 start to cut their list down and Ohio State's in their list, they know, hey, you know, Gabe Powers from Marysville is already in the class. So I think it, it might just be that momentum from 2021 is going to affect a lot of what Ohio State decides to do in 2022. And I think it's better for these in-state guys to get in now. 
Yeah, with Powers, it's the fourth commitment in the class of 2022 for Ohio State. All four are from Ohio. Two of them are linebackers uh, with C.J. Hicks and now Powers. I'm thinking, uh, you know, Ohio State in 22 is probably going to need four to five linebackers, as we said. And what you're talking about is a really unique opportunity for a group of players to rival. Gosh, I mean, if I go back to uh, 20 years now, oh, my gosh. 20 years to the class of 2002, which was the class that had A.J. Hawk, Bobby Carpenter, uh, Mike DeAndrea, who was the number one ranked linebacker in the country, Mike Kudla. That class, four linebacker-wise, was about as good as I've ever seen at Ohio State. But those four were all from Ohio, so that certainly made it a, an easier get. But if you look at C.J. Hicks and now Gabe Powers and Desan McCullough, who I guess technically is from Ohio, um, it, now you have – the makings of a group that is truly, really, really special. And as I wrote about last week, like Al Washington has to deliver on that 2022 class because he's one of those guys that Ohio State poached from Michigan. And a primary reason for that was, aside from the fact that Al is a Columbus native, uh, was because of his reputation as a recruiter. And in the first two years of him being at Ohio State, he really hasn't had to do much because the depth – chart was so loaded when he got there but now 2022 like is his time to say like I can go out and, and do this so this class and, and I think we've talked about it multiple times on this show how important it is that Ohio State has a base of Ohio kids as the starting class as the starting point of the 2022 class because CJ Hicks is working hard on the mantle of Captain Buckeye like that dude is uh, recruiting like crazy. So they, the, him and now Powers uh, with Tishabola and J.R. Brown, Tegra and, and Gabe are not going to be like the, the vocal go out and, and pound the door to not, you know, to get other players in the class type. J.R. Brown and C.J. Hicks certainly will be. But as a class now, you have four of the top five players in, in Ohio already committed um, in a time when kids can't do anything on campus. So, uh, hell, these kids can't even have, you know, unfettered phone conversations yet with Ohio State. So the fact that you've got these four this early is a major testament to Ryan Day's, you know, approach from the day he took over at Ohio State, which is lock down Ohio first. Don't do it the other way, which and obviously worked fine for Urban Meyer, but Urban's approach was go national first and then backfill with Ohio kids if you miss on some of the players around the country where Ryan Day seems to be doing it the exact opposite. Which way do you think is better? I think the way Ryan Day's doing it is working pretty pretty well right now. I mean, you've got four of the top five guys in Ohio committed already. The fifth is a guy that you wrote about last week, I believe, Emil Wagner, right? Right. And, and he, he's a really – he's a newly developing prospect. I mean, yeah. Uh, Emil They're Wagner. To, yeah. And, and, they, and then there's Blake Miller up in Strongsville, who's the sixth-ranked player in the state, who has an offer – and, you know, the expectation is that eventually he'll join the class. So I, I think Clemson's going to be a real problem in that recruitment, but we'll talk about that down the road. Um, but, yeah, the, it, the, there's a focus. And you saw it in 2020 with, with Jacob James and Trey LaRue and these guys early. Like, they could have offered those guys later and still got them. Um, but the philosophy is simple, Spencer. It's like if, you, if you're going to if you're gonna offer eventually, you may as well offer now. And also – you don't know when the first time these 2022s are going to be allowed to be on campus. Right. It could be a year from now. God forbid, but it could be, you know, we don't, we have no idea when that's going to happen. When it happens, if you've got six or seven guys from Ohio committed and the rest of the 18 guys that you want to commit are on campus with the six that are already committed from Ohio, it's going to make it feel a lot more like that brotherhood, that family. When you've got guys from Ohio who come in, on the same weekend that this five star from California or Texas or Washington come in and they get to talk to him about why they committed. And I think that's something that Ryan day is really going to put a focus on. You've written about it. We've talked about it, but if you look at the way the 2022 class is being constructed in its infancy, Ohio state is going to make sure that when a five star visits the campus, there's going to be in state guys who are already committed there to talk to as well. Yeah, I mean, it's such a cliche, but it's, it's true. You're trying to foster a family atmosphere. And if you have six players from Ohio committed, and that's probably going to be the case in this 2022 class at least, 
If you have six players committed and they're on campus with you and their families are on campus with you, all of a sudden you have an additional 35 people, you know, in, in a warm, loving, tender environment to be like, hey, this is our place. Be a part of this with us. It's, you know, communal, man. You know, man. Anyway, but that's why Ohio State, you know, we're talking about 22, but what we watched this past week for Ohio State was the Buckeyes went a little bit aggressive and started offering a handful of 2023 prospects, especially down in Florida. Um, and that's the reason why, because we have no idea when these kids are going to be able to get seen, whether it's in person, whether it's uh, an evaluation for Ohio State going down to see them play or those kids coming up to Ohio State. And you know, we, we wrote about them all week. The, the tr- one most recent one is Trayon Webb, who's a 2023 running back, defensive back from Jacksonville Trinity Christian, uh, which is where Sean Wade and uh, Tyreek Johnson and Marcus Crowley are all from. So there, there's a, obviously a connection there for the Buckeyes. But it is interesting to see the Buckeyes, who have played it pretty slow in 22, all of a sudden ramping up and offering 23 kids around the country. I mean, they're offering like the cream of the crop in 23. So it's not like they're, you know, taking any flyers or offering – Luke Montgomery or Brennan Vernon or someone like that in Ohio that they know they need to see. But it is interesting nonetheless, because you have no idea what these kids are. They only played one year of high school football and in a lot of cases, not even varsity. So you're offering them based on size and, and potential and, and, you know, coaches recommendations, but, it, but it, it, it makes me just feel like Spencer, aren't we just jumping the shark here? Isn't it too damn early to do this? Well, I mean, if they're 6'5", they're 250 pounds, and they've got NFL bloodlines. I mean, it's it's safe to say that – and you see the film, and they look pretty raw, but they look talented. Why would you not offer them? You don't – again, I'll just keep saying it. You don't know when these guys are getting to campus. You have no idea. Yeah, and, and an offer really means nothing. And, yeah, it's just kind of some publicity. Like, hey, look at what Ohio State's doing in 2023. Uh, but, you know, you have no idea. I don't think – I think as much as it's going to pain me, I'm not convinced we're going to get visits in the fall. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm with you. Maybe maybe October, November. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't see it happen. I mean, if I'm playing the the role of nervous Nelly here and negative Nancy or any other alliterative uh, term, I, I just don't think we're going to see official visits this year. And I don't know if it's going to eliminate the early signing period. I don't think that really matters. If kids want to sign in December, they should be able to. If they want to wait till March, they should be able to, and they can. But I think you'll see a lot of kids not using the February signing period and maybe waiting to sign until April. Or, you know, this, this – we're in such a brave new world here that there's just no way to know what goes on from here to next summer. But I, I feel like it – the writing is pretty much on the wall that we're not going to have official visits in the fall. Um, most states around the country are, are shuttering football for the fall. So it's not like Ohio state coaches are able to go on the road and, and see kids. You might go down to Florida, Georgia, or Texas, one of these states that uh, seems insistent on, on playing, you know, uh, Missouri says that they're going to play. So it's good for a kid like Desan McCullough, the Buckeyes, if, if Missouri is going to play, then, that in-person evaluation that he's been waiting for maybe can happen in very early September as opposed to like late November. Um, so there's all these kind of moving parts. And uh, it's similar to when I, when we're talking with Austin on, on uh, rapid reaction or anything else, but I hate to say it because it sounds like it's dismissive in a way, but like how the hell can we know what's going to happen? Like everything changes from one day to the next. You don't even know. You don't even know if if spring practice. If you, are there going to be spring visits? Yeah, you know, we, right. we have no idea how this thing's going to react in this in the winter. What's going to happen in the next couple months? What you know where we're going to be? Um, it, it we have no clue it, about anything. We do. We know absolutely nothing. And uh, yeah, I know. Weird time I know spring. one thing. Everyone wants to play football. Ohio State wants to be on the field. The coaches want to be coaching. Players around the state of Ohio and around the country want to be playing. Um, and so you hope that efforts are made to attain that goal, but you just don't know what's going to happen when local governments get involved. And um, 
if it's if it's up to the young men and administrators and coaches making if it's up to them to make a decision we don't have any doubts but it's not unfortunately so but anyway you know what you see is ohio state going out and trying to be proactive not necessarily because the offer means much because it doesn't as we saw this you know just on saturday with the the official offers going out on twitter you start to see all the graphics of the kids getting their actual offer so you know for all the people out there that wonder like what is a offer up until august 1st of a player's senior season it, it is nothing like until they get that official offer letter uh that's how you kind of really get to know if somebody is a real target or if somebody is being offered just for uh, but, perfunctory reasons. But at the same time, if you know, we can go back to different examples. CJ Stroud, Ohio State offered him early and it ended up in the top two and ended up landing CJ Stroud. If you look at even a guy who didn't pick Ohio State, Troy Stilato, they were in on Troy Stilato earlier than anyone else. And, you know, he was, they were in their, his final two. They were in on Jordan Hancock very early. He ends up flipping to Ohio State because the relationship is so good. If you start building these relationships with these 2023s now, some of them may pan out and be, become guys who you ha, who end up having Ohio State in their top three or top five just because Ohio State was in on them early. Yeah. Whereas if you don't offer them early, then you try and offer them after you evaluate them, and then you're trying to play catch up. So I think. Yeah. Well, what it is it's there's really a, there's about positioning yourself? What doing. Right. It's about positioning yeah. yourself so that whenever visits are allowed again that Ohio state is on the early part of the list for these kids to make visits to, because they're offering kids in sec country. They're offering kids in Florida. It takes a lot of heavy swings to get those kids interested in your program. It doesn't even matter. Everyone in America knows Ohio state's one of the two or three best college football programs in the country. Every high school athlete knows that, but it doesn't matter. Like you still have to be able to provide something different than Alabama or Clemson or Georgia. And it can't just be, oh, we play football good. Like you have to have a different level of a relationship to get those kids and their families to be willing after a pandemic to say, okay, let's spend a couple grand and go see Ohio State. Like, so there is value, but the value is really telling a kid, we think we like you. Do you maybe like us too? Check yes or no. <laughs> right? So who knows? But the, the reality of, of the whole big picture is we're going to keep plugging away at Letterman Row. Uh, Spencer Holbrook and I, Jeremy Birmingham, that's me, we're going to keep talking stuff about Ohio State football recruiting uh, from now until the end of time. It's kind so, of just speculation, right? Well, I mean, that's what recruiting is, right? Yeah, recruiting, is a, recruiting is a speculating world. We are, we are speculating. We are reading tea leaves. We are doing our darndest to uh, make sure that there's a finger on the proverbial pulses again until the end of time. Pulses. I will be here. I will be here for you till the end of time, everyone, uh, whether you like it or not, I guess. Uh, anyway, uh, this has been Talking Stuff, the Ohio State Recruiting Podcast, brought to you by Letterman Row and sponsored by our good friends at Pyres Auto. That's Spencer Holbrook. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. This has been uh, another wonderful discussion. Peace out. We'll catch you next time. Peace out. What am I doing, Spencer? See you guys later.